<laughs> oh, you're appearing for the Swish Pack. I'll do it later. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I'm going to come down here again. And um, again, if you've got a look to listen or look to talk rule, you can switch it off. You can look wherever you want to. Don't look at me. I'm talking to you or when you're talking, talking to me. Okay. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to notice the, uh, the strategy, the, what strategy you get. Um, because I'm going to ask you guys what your ideas are about what Phil's decision-making strategy is. That's the one that we're going to, that we're going to go for. So is there, um, is there something you bought um, and you're happy with it? You know, it's a good purchase for you. And you would buy yourself when you bought it. Yep, okay. And so, uh, and what was that? It was a PC. A PC, good, yeah, okay. Desktop PC. So, um, how did you decide that that particular PC was the one for you? Uh, in the first place, I, I, I had a brochure. Okay. I picked up a brochure. Yeah. I was just somewhere in this. It's a Dell brochure. Right? Dell brochure, yeah. okay. So, so, you, so, what was it about the brochure? So, what was, what was the very, very first thing that had to happen for you to, for you to decide that was the PC? I was looking for the component parts. Okay. Yeah. Um, did it have a DVD or a CD, CD writer was the big, one of the big things for me. Okay. Yeah. So, after you'd uh, picked up the brochure, seen the brochure, and look for the component parts. What was the very next thing that had to happen for you to know it was the PC for you? Um, I had to talk to someone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you talked to someone? Yep. And then what was the next thing that happened? After you spoke to them, what was the next thing that happened for you to decide that was the one for you? I found I found up the company. Right. And spoke to the salesman. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And after you spoke to the salesman, what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know it was the one for you? Uh, I took a load of details, wrote them down. Yeah. And then I wanted to wait. Okay. So I wouldn't commit. Okay. So I wanted to take some time to look at everything I've written down. Okay. Yeah. And see if, see if that was right for me. Okay. And, and after you the price as well. Yeah. After you take the time. Um, I found, I found the guy back. Okay. And um, what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know? For you to decide that was the computer for you? Um, I just felt comfortable. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. That's what you got. Andy, what you got? Because you remember. Because you remember. Yeah. Anything else? AD. There's certainly an AD there, yeah. And AR. And, and, and when you saw the phone pointed, you actually pointed to here. We knew he had spoken to somebody, though, didn't yeah. we? Before he even said that he had to speak to somebody. Because yeah. we actually saw the AR yeah. uh, eye accessing panel. And then he said, I had to speak to somebody. Yeah. But we already knew that. Yeah. So there's certainly an a, there's certainly an AR. It's a lovely big K at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely big K at the end, yes. And we know it's a kinesthetic internal as well, don't we? Because it's about feeling comfortable. Yeah. It came quite early on when we were reading a a writing Yeah. So what we what we're actually seeing is we're see, we're seeing them run through the strategy a number of times. So each time asking the question, what was the next thing that had to happen? We have to run the entire strategy every time. Okay. So we've definitely got a, uh, we've got a, we've got an AR. Is there anything else? I thought I got a, a VK synesthesia from some of the predicate patterns. Uh -huh. He talks about, I think, um, seeing how it felt for me. Okay. There was another tip off as well. As far as the visual remembered was about the brochure, wasn't it? But what did he, what did he do with his physiology? I saw, I picked up a brochure. I picked up a brochure, but it was in visual remembered eye accessing pain. So that's a synesthesia, yeah, kinesthetic external. There's something else though. There is something else. So we've got a kinesthetic external with a, with a synesthesia pain, something else. But you say that you saw the cat, 
No, it's all the visual remembered, yes. But, but the hand was decayed. Yes. So you get our patterns of his hand. Now, what, what you've got is we know that he's feeling oh, touch right. Right. So, uh, and he's in visual remembered. So remember, synesthesia is doing two things, two representational systems at the Yes. Yeah. So what you tend to see is visual remembered eye accessing pattern, kinesthetic physiology. Some people go like, um, what was the first thing that had to happen for you, for you to decide it was one for you? Well, it, look, it looked really good. And, they're, and they're, they're doing this. So obviously, they're looking at it and feeling it at the same time. You see, the, see these people in clothes shops? They're looking down the rail and they're feeling the clothes on the rail at the same time as looking at it. But there's something else. Something else. I don't know if anybody, anybody spotted it. It happened a couple of times. There's a, there was actually, there's, a, there's a VC comparison on the visual remembered. Yep. So you went, went, went up into visual remembered and said, well, I, I picked up a brochure. Then I said, well, what was it about the brochure? <coughs> And he went over here, and he said, I was looking for the component parts. Remember him saying that? That's, that's the picture of his wish list, which he comes into the strategy with, which is the visual construct. As he's made that of inside. That's a picture of what he wants. He's comparing what he sees on the brochure with that to know whether that PC does the appropriate thing. Yeah, correct. So, actually, it might be easier to find now. So we've got a v, v, VCVR comparison, yeah, which we do like that, comparing the two, comparing what's inside with what's outside. That's also got a kinesthetic external synesthesia. Then he has to talk to somebody about it. Then we've got the AD. Yeah, because he talks to somebody about it on the phone. Then what does he do? He writes down all the information. And then on the, on the second time through, he said, and also I had to check the price. Very nice, he came down into AD and said that. Then I said, well, what was the next thing that had to happen? He said, well, I called, the, I called the person up on the phone, still down in AD. So I didn't know if the strategy ended there. But then I said, so then what happened? What was the, what was the next thing that had to happen? for you to decide it was the one for you. He could have said at that particular point in time, that was it, I bought it. But then we saw a very nice, clear kinesthetic. He said, I had to feel comfortable. Yeah. Help me with that, yeah. The reason he goes to visually remember the all of the remember is because he's remembering the event that he's talking about. If you ask him, do you remember the time he bought something by the time own? He has to access the remember, remember the event. Wouldn't anybody do that? I mean, Not necessarily. Is the buying strategy? Not necessarily. So it is so. Part, part of his buying strategy. Which bit? The, 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 the VR. The VR? So like you ask him and he remembers the event. Is that part of the buying strategy? Or is he just remembering and recalling the event? It could be. What, we need to, what you need to do when you're listening to the strategy is make sure that it is part of the strategy and not just his lead system. So if it's his lead system, he would actually go into VR every time I asked him a question. Because he'd have to go there to get the next piece of information. If you saw that, then that, that's the lead system, not part of the strategy. So you need to drop it out of the strategy. But that wasn't what we got this, this particular point in time. OK. So how are people with this? Should we check it out with, a, with another, another example? OK, so is there, is there anything, that you, anything, else, anything else that you bought? that uh, You were by yourself when you bought it? And you uh, it was a good purchase for you. It must be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? What was that? <laughs> what do you think it was? <laughs> it's one of your trains. Oh right, okay. Oh well, so there's a certain amount of intelligence on your part. So uh, <laughs> which, which which uh, which which training was it? It was the um, presented magic. Book. Presented magic. Book. Okay. So, how did you decide that presenting magically was the training for you? Uh, I, I knew I knew I would need more skills in that area. Okay. Yeah. So, what? As far as where we are at the strategy at this point in time, where are we at this point in time? Are we at the decision-making strategy or the motivation strategy? 
motivation. Yeah, I, so the motivation comes from, I, I knew I would need more skills in that area. Okay, that's what gets him motivated to start, to start actually the decision-making process of finding, deciding which is the presentation skills course for him. Okay, so, okay, so, so you needed, you needed um, skills in that area. So how did you decide that presenting magically, specifically, was um, the training for you? Uh, firstly, I looked at the some of the content okay. in, in the book. Yeah. Oh, in the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you looked at the content in the book. Yeah. And then. Um, I think I spoke to one of the one of the guys about it, one of the coaches. Okay. At, the, at, a, at, a, at another tra previous training. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. practitioner training. Yeah. yeah. After you spoke to him, after you spoke to one of the coaches, what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know that presenting magically was the training course for you? Actually, I think I've got the brochure on it as well. Oh, okay. And read the parts. Yeah. Okay. So you read the brochure? Yeah. Read past the brochure? Yeah. Yeah. And after you'd, after you'd read past the brochure, what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know it was not for you? I think I told, I think I spoke some more about it. Okay. With someone. Because you, well, you wouldn't want to commit immediately, would you? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I had another discussion about content. Okay, about the content, right. Okay. And the next steps, even in the evening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So after all that, what was the what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know it was one for you? Just feel that it was the right thing to do. Okay. Right. If you um, yeah. if you notice that very last one, that very last question, because right, we've gone through all of the it, what he's done is gone through sev several iterations of the entire thing. On that, on that last one when I said, okay, so after you'd been to the next steps, what was the, what was the next thing that had to happen for you to know it was one for you? If you notice, he ran through every single step in that strategy over there, absolutely perfect. Did you notice that? Every single step. He did the VC, he did the VR, VC, VR comparison. Went down to AR, went down to AD, and, and then I said, and what, was the, what was the next thing that had to happen? He said, well, I, I felt it was one for me. Everybody get that one? Good. And what do we know about it is convincing. It's a, it's a period of time convincer, isn't it? Yeah. He has to, he has to take a period of time. Uh, like, uh, over what kind of like period of time do you normally take to get convinced? I've been very dangerous for me to tell you that. <laughs> uh, normally a day or two days. A day or two days? Oh, right. Okay. okay. I think when I when I bought the com computer, it was a funny man about 24 hours later. Right. Okay. So we've got a. What we take to that as being is a uh, is a two is a two day convincer. A day or two days take the long take the longest one. Two day convincer. As far as period of time. So, okay. so what what I think would be um, what we'll do now is we'll we'll utilize it to test it out, see how it works. So what we'll do first is we'll mismatch it. <coughs> Mismatch the strategy and see what response we get, and then we'll match the strategy and see what response we get. Okay, so I just need to work out something to uh, to sell. You, you, want to, you want to buy a watch? Or I don't buy another trade. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper than the trade. <laughs> Consider it. No. In fact, this watch makes all of our trainers look very cheap and reasonable price. <laughs> So we'll, we'll do a, um, pretend you want to buy a new watch. No problem. No, <laughs> no problem. You can access that state easily. Yes. No, it's a bastard, isn't it? Me too. <laughs> People say to me, like, I do like watches. With all the watches you've got, why don't you give them a shot? And I say, well, I won't make any money because I'd wear all the stock. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to let any get out the door. You know? So I'm going to mismatch it first. Okay. So let's say you come into uh, uh, David Shepard's Watch Emporium. Okay. 
-hmm. And what I'm what I'm going to what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to run the strategy backwards and see what response we actually get from it. Okay. So I've definitely got the watch that you're going to feel the most comfortable about. It's the right price. It's got all the features on it that you want. And um, you know, all the people who've bought it from us before have said that they think that this watch is absolutely fantastic. They're really, really happy with it. <laughs> what do you think? Is it the watch for you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get many buying signs. <laughs> think I blew it. <laughs> Notice the look of complete confusion. <laughs> As in, what's this crap talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was running it backwards. He, can, he can't process the information that way and make a decision. Yeah. So you decide not to go to that guy, not to buy a watch from that guy. No. Which is a, a good decision. Because yeah. he's actually a person that's better than my trainings or something. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you go take a walk down the street. I want this shredded afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> What, internally or just on the board? <laughs> Certainly away from these people. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be buying lots of lunches, you know. <laughs> now they know your decision will be spent. Okay, so you're going to, you're going to the, uh, you're going to walk down a bit further down the street, you're going to another, another shop. Okay. And, um, and, we, and you, obviously you still want to buy a new watch. Yeah. So, I know that you've got an idea about the kind of what the watch you're looking for would look like. And I don't know how this actually compares with the uh, yes, right. with, um, <laughs> with the uh, with the, you know with the idea about you know that you came in with as far as like what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, one of one of the things I, I can certainly say is that all the people that have bought that particular watch from us over the years, um, you know, they, they've they've all they've all of them come back and said that it's been such a fantastic watch. It's, other people have, have commented on it and, and, and told them how how good it looks on them and, and all that kind of thing. And um, <coughs> that's all the all the appropriate uh, features that uh, that you said that you were looking for. And uh, we can also do a uh, a good price for you. Um, and um, you know the price is so good, in fact, that you'll wish that you came in two days ago. So you can get so you have the good, comfortable feeling about it now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so much. <laughs> So, um, um, I mean, do you do you feel that's the that's the watch for you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very easily, <laughs> very easily. Okay. Good. That is the difference. So, notice the key differences. Yeah, let's look at how I how I actually paced the strategy. First, I started talking about what he was looking for in a watch. That's the visual construct. That's what he comes in with. And I said, I don't know how this compares with what you're looking for. We notice then we get the kinesthetic external synesthesia kicks in, hand comes up, has to grab it. Yeah. Then obviously I'm talking to him, so we've got the AR there as well. But what I decided to do is put even more in as far as that's concerned. Other people who bought this watch come back and told us uh, how pleased they are with it. In fact, that, that all of them have said that other people have said to them how how good it looks and, and all this kind of kind of thing. Then uh, I went into price. And features. <laughs> what I also decided to do then was to see if we could kind of like short circuit the um, the two day period of time convincer by saying you know you'll you'll, you'll you'll wish that you'd come in two days ago, so that you didn't have to wait to have the feeling of being comfortable about it now, um, <laughs> and then closed on the final bit. Do you feel it's the watch for you? That's how you that's how, that's how you utilize the strategy. So what do you think? Do you think we got that pretty accurate? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 I think that the point of view on, um, on strategies is always this. Obviously, the human nervous system is, what is, is a complex multiprocessing device. What we're doing with strategies is we're wanting to take this, whatever the, whatever the nervous system is doing when it makes the decision, and put it into a linear process like that. Is that exactly what Phil does internally when he makes the decision? Probably not. Does it work to enable us to get him to a point of decisiveness? Well, yes, it does. So therefore, what we've got is useful. It doesn't guarantee that he's always going to say yes at the end of it, but it does guarantee that it'll be he'll be at a decision point at the end of it. He'll either have the feeling of comfort for it or not. 
So it, it, does, it doesn't mean that it, it means that we can always get people to say yes or decide yes, but what it does mean is that we can always get people to a decision point, which is actually the most important thing in a, in a sales situation. You just want people who are going to decide. Because if it's not the one for them, then all you need to do is go back into your watch cabinet and get another one out. But what we don't want is people who are, who are in a state of indecisiveness. And utilizing this strategy enables you to have people go into a state of decisiveness. So they can say, yes, that's the one for me. No, that's not the one for me. Do it very easily. So, do we have different uh, strategies for different frames? One for buying and sell, buying for his wife, buying for his company, or would it actually tend to be universal? I would say, I mean, this is why I always ask: Is there something you've bought that you're happy with? Because some people have a, have a decision-making strategy that has them get things that they're happy with, and a decision-making strategy that has them get things that they're not happy with. We we don't want the not happy decision-making strategy. Um, also. He could have a different decision-making strategy if he's out shopping with somebody else. So what, that's why I asked him that he was by himself when he bought it. So, and then potentially, yes, he could have a different strategy. I would, I would say that what we've, what we've found is that he's got the same strategy for different things in that context, of buying things for himself. He's the same strategy for a computer, a training course, and a watch. So the lead is very important to make sure you're in the right yeah. sort of frame because you, you yeah. could be doing something completely yeah. different yeah. really from what you're And you could elicit something that you, that you don't want. So um, I will always elicit the strategy in the context that I want to use it in. So if I'm selling training to a company, what I'll say is, is there a training course that, you, that you've invested in previously that turned out to be a really good decision for you? How did you know that was one for you? Because even then, if they, if they do use a different strategy in other areas, it doesn't matter. I've elicited it in the in the context I want to use it. And so that's a, definitely a key piece. And that's in the clarity of your questioning, the setup for what you want. Dave? Uh, from the um, station, you mismatch the strategy. You can see that very clearly. Yep. And then you match it using all of the yep. components. Yeah. If, if you're not as good as you, could you, could you get somewhere just by picking out a couple of them? Or have you got to get in? No, I, I, would, I would say, I mean, obviously, in a real-life situation, I don't do the mismatch. I just did the mismatch for the purpose of you seeing that there was a difference. You know, I wouldn't go to a sales situation to deliberately mismatch somebody's uh, strategy. So that, that was just for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, I think that, you know, we, we spent quite a bit of time getting that, that strategy very accurately. Though we got most of the components with the first question. In a sales situation, I, I've only got one shot at it. So I'm probably unlikely to get that level of accuracy. But certainly would have got the VC and the VR and the kinesthetic external synesthesia on that. Would have certainly got the auditory remembered, because that certainly came out, and the AD. The kinesthetic at the end took a little bit more questioning. Um, but would, would have got that, which, is, which, would be, which would certainly get you a better result than using your own decision-making strategy, which unconsciously is what most salespeople do is they, they unconsciously assume that everybody uses the same decision-making strategies then. And unconsciously, that's the way they sell to other people. So even if you'd only got a rough approximation to it, it would still be better than using your own strategy. And the other thing at the start, you said, um, you've got to look, look to listen more or look to talk, switch it off, do you reply and can't say that? No, <laughs> that's be a bit of a tip off. What you, well, what you can do is you can unconsciously suggest to someone that it's okay for them to do that. And then what you do is you ask them a question, and then you glance away. Just after you've asked them a question, which unconsciously says to them, it's okay for you not to look at me when, uh, when I'm talking to you or when you're talking to me. So you ask them a question, and then you look away. That's, that gives an unconscious suggestion of, it's okay to look wherever you want. That's the way you do that. I'm sorry, again, in terms of the context, if it was a more complicated sales situation, like say, for instance, he was a recommender rather than you know, the decision maker, we're not selling watches, we're selling something much more complicated, there would be multiple people involved. What sort of framing questions would you use? When was the last time you made a decision, uh, made a recommendation to your boss to buy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If that was the role that they played, yeah. If that was the, if that was the role that they that they played as a recommender to purchaser, I mean, personally, what I prefer is that I was actually with the decision maker. 
and they were there at the time. Sometimes you might do. So in that, in that case, if that was the role they were playing, as being a recommender, then I would ask them exactly that question. I'd say, so um, was there a, if I was doing training programs, was, is there been a training program in the past um, that uh, you recommended to your boss that uh, then turned out to, to have been a really good recommendation for you? Yes, it was this, this training. Oh, right, OK. So how, how did you decide that was the one to recommend? But again, it's ask specifically for what you want the person to do inside. How do you decide that was the training course to recommend? To answer that question, they've got to go inside and go through their <coughs> decision to recommend process, which you're then going to see in the iPad. So ask for exactly what you want. Yeah, there you go. All right. Curiosity, um, I, I, I do so for a living. And, um, Typically, if you, if, if you were to go in and ask me directly, like I'm sending consultancy, if I ask them about consultancy specifically, <laughs> you know, it's usually, hang on, I'm not telling you that. Oh, okay, that's right. Like, um, or, you know, you have to, you, you come at it again during the course of the conversation. And sure, you could say, well, if you haven't got a report, if you haven't report, you'd have got that. We do come back and pick it up later on. Right. But to pick up the decision making strategy, you would ask them something else, which would be, you would be just kind of looking for something, a, a context, <coughs> which you could try and get that strategy from. Okay. I personally don't do that. I, I go straight for what I want, yeah. but I pre-frame it. And the way I pre-frame it is, I say, you know, unless I have a certain training, yeah, for other consultancy. So at the start of the meeting, one of the things I say is, before we start, can I ask you a few questions? As soon as you say before, before, we, before we start, they immediately go, ah, we're not being salted. So, so then I say, um, so that's out frame. So then what I say to them is, um, so um, one of the things that's most important to me about providing training is that we provide the highest level of service and results to our clients as possible. Is that important to you? Normally they'll say, well, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So, to, to enable me to be able to uh, provide you with the highest level of service and results that, that, that is important to the two of us, um, I, I need to ask you some questions. And from time to time, you might think, and that's a strange question, or you know, from time to time, you might think, I've never been asked that question before. Or you, or you might think, wow, you know, David's really asking me a lot of questions. All I want you to know before we actually start uh, that process is that that's the only way that we're able to get the level of service. Uh, and result that we both desire. Is that okay with you? And as soon as they say, yes, that's okay with me, they've accepted the preframe, and I can now ask them anything they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so can I... Can